Zami and painting were one and the same. Painting without Zami doesn't exist. From my early childhood, I remember Zami painting. I remember his painting corner. It always contained a painting. Even when he was abroad, there was a painting waiting to dry, the palette with colors mixed, a glass holding the brushes. I shall cherish this memory forever. Zami Steinovich, a brush that touched the sky and fell silent. A culture of art that covered a mind-shattering range. Women, Jewish existence, rich cafe life. A talent born in Poland in 1951, grew in Israel and spread to centers of culture and world capitals. Zami Steinovich, an existence cut short on the threshold of a new century. I saw his painting corner, and instead of the open easel holding a painting, I saw it standing by, palette and brushes wrapped at the side. And that was that, finished, final. Zami had a Jewish soul, but at the same time he was always looking outward to the world. Zami loved watching films. In the 60s and 70s, there were many American films which brought in landscapes from the outside world, films that showed Paris, and Zami's eyes glittered while watching them. Zami sought to get out of the village where we lived, a small village called Bin Nun, near Ramla, a village close to the border, a border with the enemy, a border which had to be guarded by night. In those days, there was no communication as we have today, no television, no exposure to images. Zami was curious to see what the world contained. Whenever he could lay his hands on an art book, it became his whole world. He would look through it avidly. Norway, Scandinavia. Zami, who grew up in the village of Bin Nun in Israel, inaugurates here an exhibition in a northern country. A universal recognition of the man whose colors connected oceans and spoke to hearts overseas and, in this manner, made his mark in the world. I never planned to do things. I mean, the things coming more spontaneous. I could be influenced by South America by seeing folklore things and colors and uh, music. And, uh, like was with the piece in 78, I was taken by it because it was a historic moment. Beginning, I was more, uh, I was more a surrealistic painter when I was in Israel, and then I was doing. It's funny when I was in England, I was doing more cafes and was ladies, and when I went to the States, I did a lot of uh, Jewish uh, subjects and festivals and uh, things from the childhood. A good child. He was always painting, even until two o'clock in the morning, all the time. When he was in the army, he had already exhibited and sold all the pictures. How did you feel when he went abroad, suddenly leaving home? We didn't want him to, but nothing helped, and off he went. Did you visit him there? I did, a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, Zami goes out into the world, and the world opens wide its gates to him. Stardust, champagne and crystal glasses, festive openings, but all these did not change his work or personality. Zami remained faithful to his colors, to his scrutinizing eye, to his understanding heart, which knew how to transform emotions into the language of colors. Here, he is seen at the opening of his exhibition in the Park West Gallery in Michigan. We began our association with Zami Steinovitz in 1995. We bought some of his paintings and sold them very well. And that same year, we published 10 
editions of serographs, and they were received wonderfully by the public because so many people love Zami's work and would love to collect it, and we're so fortunate to be able, through this relationship with the estate, to continue to bring these wonderful works to collectors, enthusiastic collectors all over the world. One of the peaks of Zami's artistic activity was the meeting with Pope John Paul II in the Vatican in Rome. Zami had been impressed by the personality of Anna Frank, had imprinted her image on a medallion and had won the blessing of her father Otto Frank. By chance, this medallion found its way to the Pope and he invited Zami to an audience. The international recognition of the head of the Catholic Church reflected the connections in Zami's personality linkages between religions, assimilation of consciousness of the Holocaust, all bound with a special attitude to Jewish values and their dissemination throughout the world. The Pope promised Zami to visit Israel, and indeed, he kept this promise several years later. I remember how, during this visit, as we approached the Pope and the Cardinal, head of his office, the latter must have thought that the Pope would see us for a couple of minutes look again at the medal and dismiss us, but that didn't happen. The Pope went on talking with us. He asked Zami where his parents were born in Poland and did he speak Polish. And Zami told him the whole story of his family. The Pope then asked me about my parents' origin and I told him that my mother came from Krakow in Poland, not far from where the Pope himself came from, as well as being near Zami's parents' hometown. The Pope just didn't want to let us go. He went on to ask how many religious people were there in Israel and how many super-Orthodox were among them. Zami displayed all his artistic outlook. I saw the Cardinal wondering why the Pope was wasting his time on these Jews and steered the Pope gently towards ending the visit. On the next day, Zami and I were sitting in a restaurant. A couple approached us and asked Zami for a blessing, following his lengthy visit to the Pope. Zami took a serviette and sketched something on it, with a circular movement. And this was perhaps his significant characteristic, beyond his paintings. This was my Zami.